Hi, my name is Emily and I'm a preparator at the George Eastman Museum, which means that usually on a weekday I would be at the museum framing photographs and getting things ready for our exhibitions. Um, but today I am so lucky I am home with my daughter and we have been doing a lot of reading lately. And one of our favorite books this week is... The Bluest of Blues, Anna Atkins and the Forced Book of Photographs by Fiona Robinson. Robinson. Uh, and this is just a really fun and beautiful book and it is about the uh, first woman photographer whose name was Anna Atkins and she published the first photographically illustrated book. Uh, and it's a really, it's beautiful book and it's talking about how she was interested in botany. Her father was a scientist and at the time when she was growing up and becoming an adult, women weren't really encouraged to study the sciences um, and they were often excluded from things like um, uh, universities say, say who she married. scientific societies. You want me to say who she married? Mm -hmm. uh, her, she married someone named John Pelly Atkins. Um, and she really wanted to contribute to the scientific community um, and share her research with the world. And she used the cyanotype process to print specimens from her uh, collection of um, plants, including seaweed, and published the first photographically illustrated book. And it has some images from that book in this storybook um, that are really, really beautiful. And we also have some examples of her work in our collection at the museum. Um, so not only was this process used um, from the very early days of photography, both for scientific things as well as artistic things. Um, but it continues to be used today by contemporary artists. We, in a recent exhibition, had uh, work by the artist B. Nettles that used the cyanotype process. Um, what we were thinking about was that it's just such a great process uh, to teach um, young kids and older kids and adults about photographic processes because it's pretty simple to do. Um, and we were hoping to share that with you today. So, should we go gather some specimens? Yeah, do let's do this. Let's do this, all right. <laughs> Gathering specimens was fun, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so we've got all of our specimens and they are drying in some books behind us here. We're just gonna let those dry out. We're gonna try drying them for a couple days and we'll see how they look. 
Uh, in the meantime, we're going to get some of our chemistry ready to go. Now, we're going to be mixing our chemistry um, from the dry ingredients. This is potassium ferrocyanide and this is ferric ammonium citrate. That is a fun thing to do if you have older kids or if you're a grown up, but if you're looking for something that's a little more approachable to do with young kids, you're in luck. Uh, they do have already coated paper that's readily available on the internet. So you can pick up this instead, keep it a lot simpler, less messy, you don't have to worry about having um, as many materials around. So I recommend this if you're working with some younger kids. All right, ready to mix some chemicals? Yeah, let's do this! Well, we have had a lot of fun the last couple days learning more and, uh, about Anna Atkins and the cyanotype process. Uh, and we hope that you've had fun too and that you'll try some of this out at home. Um, you don't need to have all of the exact same things that we had. You really can make cyanotypes uh, in the simplest way possible. Just with get pretty the much anything. cyanotype kit and make them with pretty much anything and wash them in some water. Um, and we added a little watercolor embellishment to some of ours afterwards. Um, <laughs> anyway, we hope you'll give this a try and that you will have as much fun as we did. You want to say bye? Bye, baby! <laughs> bye!